creating HTML reports in PowerShell. Hi, I'm Don Jones, and this has got to be one of the killer uses for Windows PowerShell, assembling information from multiple places and pulling it together into a somewhat beautiful looking HTML report that you can drop onto an intranet web server or even stick in as an email attachment. You may already know about PowerShell's convert to HTML command, but there's definitely a trick to using it to generate multiple pieces of information. I've written a little script here. Now what some folks will do is just pipe multiple pieces of information to successive calls of convert to HTML and append it all into the same file. Some web browsers, especially Internet Explorer, will let you get away with that because they're a little lazy. But normally convert to HTML generates a complete self-contained web page. And the standard for the HTML language says that you can only have one of those per file. So technically, just continually appending more HTML to the same file breaks that standard. It means it won't work with all web browsers. So here's what I've done instead. I've created a script that accepts two parameters. The computer name that I want to go get information from and the file path that I want to save the final HTML report into. Now, just for convenience, I've set default values for these. That way I can run this without having to specify a value and it'll still work. And that lets me test it against the local host with a file going out to report.html. And then I've got three blocks, one, two, and three, all of which are doing essentially the same thing. They're using get WMI object, and you could use any command to retrieve information. I just chose to use this one because well, WMI exposes so much great information. Uh, I'm retrieving a particular class from the specified computer. So you can see here where I'm using my computer name variable, and that will contain whatever was passed into this parameter. I'm piping that to the select object command. And that's because all of these WMI classes have got a ton of information associated with them, and I don't really want all of it. I just want these pieces. So for the operating system, I'm grabbing the build number, the caption, the service pack major and minor version. Uh, when I come down and do the computer system, I'm getting the DNS host name, the domain, the domain role, manufacturer, model, system name, number of logical processors, and total physical memory. When I do the uh, services, I'm just grabbing the name, the state, and the start mode. Now in each of these blocks, the next thing I'm doing after selecting the properties I want is running convert to HTML. But rather than com producing a complete HTML page, I'm asking it to produce just a fragment. Now in the first set, because I, I really just have what, four pieces of information, I'm having it produce that as a list. Uh, and in the second one, also, because it's a single object and I'm just grabbing several pieces of information, I'm producing it as a list. In the third one, because I'm getting multiple different services, I'm letting it format that as a table, just so you can see both. Now, in each instance, I'm also putting a little header at the top of that information. And that tells me what kind of, what block of information I'm in. So here's the hardware, here's the services, and then in this one, I'm producing the date that I generated this report, a couple of HTML line breaks, and then a header for this section, telling me that this is the operating system information. Notice that I'm using actual HTML tags in here. This is just being fed through raw. The last thing I'm doing, and this is kind of crucial, is piping it to out string. And that makes sure that rather than a, a, a bunch of different little objects in there, I'm just getting string objects. You don't need to do this all the time, but I've run into a couple of instances where if I don't pipe it to out string, my final results get weird. So I've just kind of gotten into the habit of doing that. All of this is being saved into these three variables, OS, comp, and services. So the last thing I do is just combine all of those. I'm saving it into a variable final, and, and I don't technically need to do that. I'm not using that variable for anything else. I I kind of sometimes do other things with these scripts. I don't just put the HTML right out to a file. And so again, I'm just in the habit of putting the information into a variable. And that way, if I want to do something else with it, it's already there. So I'm just running convert to HTML. Notice that I'm not piping anything to it. I'm just running the command. I'm giving it a title, and that'll be in the title of the HTML page. Notice that these lines end in the uh, escape character for PowerShell. It's a back tick or a grave accent. And it's really important that that be the last character on the line in order for this to work. I'm using the pre-content 
parameter to feed it my three variables that contain my three chunks of HTML. And then for the body parameter, I'm just giving it a, a top level heading that includes the computer name. Notice that I'm using the trick with double quotes that lets me stick a variable in here. Finally, once I've got the final HTML, I pipe it out to whatever file was specified. So let's run that. There it is. And now let's take a look at that HTML file. So here's my top level header one, uh, the generated date. So if you remember, these two pieces of information were created together. And here's my operating system information, my hardware information. And if I scroll down a bit, a list of all my services that are running on that computer. So pretty effective. Now it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but I could get one of the web guys in my environment to generate maybe a cascading style sheet, attach that using another parameter of convert to HTML and pretty things up a bit. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.